Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is ESPN college football analyst and insider, national champion Trevor Maddich for another Maddich Monday. Okay, Trevor, time to get your hot take. What is your DEFCON level for BYU football? One being nuclear war is imminent, and five being, you know what, it's all status quo. It's okay. Uh, I would say pudding. Pudding? Yeah, it's uh, not as good as you want it to be, but it's okay. You know, that's, that's kind of where they are right now. It's kind of hard to tell exactly how good they are. All we really know is how good they're not. They're not remotely as good as LSU or Wisconsin, which is no great failing. They're within six points of Utah, and that's pretty good, especially coming off of a physical loss against LSU the week before. So we still don't know how good this team really is. I think right now there's a lot of panic saying that they're no good at all, and that's not fair. I think that this team's a lot better than it feels like right now, and they're a lot better than their record is just because of the nature of the teams that they have faced. And so if you talk about DEFCON, uh, I would say don't panic, don't worry. There's no need to put DEFCON up into the yellow or red right now. It's been, a, it's been a brutal schedule, and let's give them some more time as the season shakes out to figure out how good they really are. BYU has played three teams in a row in the top 25. This could certainly be an out for everybody. Yet, I don't think that we've seen a lot from the BYU offense to be like, yeah, there's a huge amount of hope that they're going to be better. The hope is not in the BYU offense. The hope is that the opponents are worse. So what are you more hopeful of, that the BYU offense is actually good or that – the opponents get worse, so then that will mean BYU will show better. Wow, that's pretty brutal right there. That's, that's very, very brutal. The thing is, both, I think, will happen. Because as the opponents kind of get down from the lofty perch of the teams they've faced so far, then the offense will have more of a chance to get up to speed, to get some rhythm, to get, some, some, you know, to get out of first gear. Against Portland State in the opener, they, they looked sluggish. They looked poor. They didn't get done what they wanted to get done in terms of establishing a physical presence and a rhythm in the passing game. But a lot of teams struggled early in the season. A lot of teams struggled in that opener. And then, you know, they got a little bit better as the season went on. But, see, as you look at other teams, some of those teams struggled in the opener against a really good opponent, and then they had somebody of less quality that they could face that they could then develop a little bit of that rhythm. BYU hasn't had that luxury. You know, they struggle with rhythm against Portland State. And then all of a sudden, bang, here comes the next three in a row. So, you know, I think there's a combination that as the, as the competition levels out, you'll see better performance from the offense just based on the competition. But more important than that, you'll see BYU's offense have a chance to really develop more of a rhythm. If you're three and out all the time, as a play caller, what do you do? You know, what you really want as a play caller is to, is to get a first down. And then you establish the run, and then you establish the play-action pass, and then you set up a deep shot down the field because the defense is not sure what's going on because you have strung together five or six first downs, three or four first downs even. And they haven't been able to get that done for a variety of reasons so far in the first month of the season. So, you know, I think it's a little bit of both that as the, as the competition levels out, the, the offense will get into a rhythm. And I think that rhythm feeds on itself. BYU scores six points in a home game, lose by 34 to 10th-ranked Wisconsin. The fewest points BYU has scored since a three spot against Boston College in 2005. What were your takeaways for why BYU couldn't get it going on offense against Wisconsin on Saturday? Well, a couple of reasons. One is that we talked before, we talked last week about how Wisconsin will feel a lot like LSU to BYU. They are big and physical on both lines, and they brought back all three of their starting defensive linemen from last year, and they nearly won the Big Ten last year. So this, this is a good Wisconsin team. We start there. Then all of a sudden you've got a quarterback that hasn't been getting first-team reps, and Bo Hodge come in and try to get things figured out. Uh, so you're sort of starting from scratch at that position. And then you've got the offensive line that hasn't, hasn't really performed as well as I thought they would. This is a good offensive line, and they faced – outstanding defensive lines the last three weeks in a row. So I don't, didn't expect them to push people around. But at the same time, I expected them to not make as many mistakes as they did. And then that hurts the rhythm of the offense. And that gets us right back to the place that we talked about a second ago, 
which is if you can't get into a rhythm and you keep going three and out, then you can't get anything established and you look a lot worse than you actually might be. Bo Hodge uh, got the start. Uh, Tanner Mangum, you know, out with that ankle injury. Uh, TBD on how long he's out. We'll, we'll see on there. What did Bo Hodge show you at quarterback? He showed that he's a gamer. He showed some moxie. He showed that sudden the sudden ability to, to run and make the defense perk up and realize when he has the ball in his hands and he breaks out of the pocket, he's a real threat. Considering the BYU's offense hasn't shown much of a threat any other way so far this year, it's kind of nice to add that extra threat. I mean, it looks in style in some ways at some time similar to what BYU's offense did last year with Taysom Hill, where you've got the quarterback now doing a lot more running and certainly a threat to do more running. And I think that will help them. They need a spark. And this is nothing against uh, Tanner, or Tanner Mangum. The problem is that at some point, you've got to make some change to get some spark. And usually the quarterback position is the place you try to do that. And so people think it's because the starting quarterback had failed. Not necessarily. You're just looking for anywhere that you can make a change. And you can make a change at left guard, but it probably won't give you much of a spark. Quarterback might. Trevor Maddich of ESPN with us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. It is a Maddich Monday on BYU Sports Nation. What do you expect BYU to do after the bye week in a matchup in Logan against Utah State? You know, I don't know what to expect. i be very interested to watch it because this is a rivalry game. It is a bigger game for Utah State than it is for BYU. It'll feel bigger to Utah State than it'll feel for BYU. And even after a bye week, BYU will come in really kind of beaten down, mentally and emotionally and especially physically, after that run of LSU, Utah, and Wisconsin. So BYU is better than Utah State. Um, I expect them to start sluggishly. I expect Utah State to come out with their hair on fire and do some great things. But then I expect BYU to get their feet back under them and take over the game. And so I I won't be upset if BYU starts slow against Utah State as long as they get that fire lit and they get get going. Whenever there's a bye week, it feels like almost everyone says the following, oh, it's a great time for a bye week. I think this is a terrible time for a bye week. I wish BYU played Utah State this Saturday and had something positive to push towards in fixing – things instead it's going to be two weeks of a lot of this rhetoric of oh the offense is terrible and whatnot do you wish BYU had a game this week or is a bye week a good thing to fix things without a game I think the bye week is fantastic and forget fixing anything the bye week is fantastic because they have to get their legs back under them I mean they're beat down when you look at that that run of teams LSU Utah Wisconsin in a row I mean that's as physical a run as any team will have in any conference in the country That's brutal right there. And so you can talk about fixing the offense, whatever that might mean. You can talk about tweaking different things schematically. You can talk about practice for some of the younger guys. None of that stuff matters nearly as much as the fact that the coaches can choke down practice a little bit for a week, let the guys get refreshed a little bit, and then get back into what feels to them like a football season instead of feeling like an abject meat grinder which is what they've been in for the last month. Trevor, looking at BYU's schedule between LSU, Utah, Wisconsin, and Mississippi State, who's the best team on BYU's schedule right now in college football? The best team, I think, is Wisconsin right now. LSU is phenomenal. The problem is that their passing game still hasn't established itself. and We saw that on Saturday against Mississippi State where Mississippi State just absolutely throttled the LSU offense. But part of that is that, that the passing game wasn't working. I mean, BYU did, well, did much better on defense than they get credit for against LSU without any offensive support at all. Mississippi State's offense has turned out to be much, much better than LSU's offense, and that makes a difference to your guys on the other side of the ball. I think Mississippi State, boy, they may end up being the best team that BYU will face, depending on how well – Uh, They continue to progress because they showed, once again, strong offensive and defensive lines as they competed head-to-head with LSU's athletes at the line of scrimmage. But then they also showed an offense that is a lot more dynamic than any offense that BYU will face all season. So that Mississippi State game looms as another game that BYU has got to be completely up for 
in order to avoid a blowout, much less, you know, get a win. Trevor, great insight as always. DEFCON pudding, uh, a great way to put it, man. We appreciate the time. <laughs> yeah, pudding, it's not solid, but it's got its advantages, you know. <laughs> it's not altogether unfortunate.